Hello, my name is Roman Jinjihashvili, and this lecture is about typical and very instructive pawn endings. Well, we have two endings today. I have to show you this. They were, they've been played quite some time apart. One was played in 1951. Nevertheless, it's very instructive end game. And the other was played a few days ago. This is a game between two strong masters. And I can show you typical mistakes being played in this game uh, that you can see every day. This is same color bishop ending. You see most of white spots are on dark squares, black spots, all of them are white squares. Based on the principles, white supposed to be better, but they are not, of course, because black has protected pass pawn on c4 and it's black smoke. Black plays bishop f5, and white has no choice than to exchange the queens, uh, bishops. If bishop moves, then c3 followed by c2, white is going to lose the bishop. Bishop takes f5, pawn takes f5, king must go to f1, that's an easy part, in order to catch the c pawn, now c3 will be met by king e2. And black is coming up with king to g7, king e2, king g6. This is the critical position that everyone should know how to play. Um, in this position, white made a terrible mistake. White played king e3. In my opinion, after king e3, white is lost. What happened here is black played king g5, and now white quickly loses. White supposed to stop black's king from further advancing on a king's side because they have to set up pawn barrier on the king's side because the c4 pawn, black's pass pawn, will completely need white's king attention. So king e3, king g5, white is lost. <coughs> They cannot stop black from playing f4. If white plays f4 by itself, then king h4 and king is coming to g3, getting every white pawn, every one of them. Then c3, king e3, king g3, and as you can tell, all white pawns fall. So white is lost here. White played g3 with the intention of going f4. If white plays f4, position will be a draw. But black goes f4, and on gf, king f5, and on f3, h6, king e2, king takes f4, and on king f2, h5, and eventually uh, black's king penetrates in white's uh, position and black wins easily. Now, the important thing here to know how we're going to draw f4 move seals the position. White, black will never 
have a penetration square. On King H5, G3, you see, Black's king cannot advance any farther. King G6, King D2. If Black plays H5 with intention of going H4, White will go H4. And now it seems like Black has an extra pawn, but position is easy draw. Well, let's try to swing Black's king on the queen side. White is going to go king a4, king d7, king c6, king, king b4, and on king c6, king a4. White simply plays king b4 and king um, a4. There is nothing that can be done by black. Now, let's try to win this position anyway by black. Let's see what's going to happen. Now, of course, if white goes king c3 after king b5, black is winning easily. Finally, their king penetrates to white's position and exterminates all the pawns. But of course, we cannot uh, let king uh, go to b5, black's king. And after king a4, suppose black tries to win with the c3. This is an interesting point here. We go king b3, and after king b5, king takes c3. King a4, now you see black, black's king penetrates on the queen side. And finally they got here. But now white is winning after g4. And you see, no matter what happens, white gets past pawn and wins easily. HGH5, black's pass pawn will be stopped easily after king f2, and white's pass pawn is simply winning. Same is going to happen after fg and f5. Black is go white's going e6, e7, and there is no way of stopping that pawn. So black cannot really sacrifice the C pawn, but then we're gonna go around the circles and white will never let black king to penetrate uh, on the queen side. If there is no queen side, there is absolutely deadly blocked uh, king side as well position is absolute draw. Now, if we go a few moves earlier in this position, bishop f5, oh, actually, um, the, what, th this position is, if we go a few moves earlier, like, suppose black goes, uh, white goes bishop b1, bishop d7, bishop c2. Any time black goes bishop f5, after exchange, and king f1, king g7, king e2, king g6, f4 has to be played. Actually, f4 should be played the first chance white get. And now, well, whatever black does, white goes g3, and it would be a bad mistake to go h4. No h4 can be played because, well, it, it's, it's, it's a black's move now. If they go h6, white, black suppose goes king g7. No, no, king g, either king g7 or maybe like, yeah, king g7 or king h7. White simply stands and waits. White cannot go h4 because after king h5, they lose. They supposed to keep pawns on h3 and g3, keep all the penetration squares. And as soon as black uh, goes h5, now they must go h4, not to allow h4 for black. So now they must go h4, and the only hope black has is 
to get their king in white's position on a queen side. And as we just saw, that is impossible. Very instructive pawn ending. Now, this position just happened very few days ago between in some very strong tournament between, between two uh, very strong grandmasters. We have opposite color bishops. White has two extra pawns, but as you probably know, that in opposite color bishops, two extra pawns are not enough a lot of times. Here we have 100% blockade of white's kingside pawns. And if it's white's move, now question where to move the bishop. Bishop is under attack. And here is the interesting part. Now, let's see. let's see. If bishop goes to d4 or f2, it doesn't matter where. It, wherever bishop moves, the game is drawn. It's a draw. King b7, king g4, king c6, king f4, king d6, and black is going with a king on e6, and there is no way white will ever be able to make a progress. So black simply protects the pawn on d7, d7, but of course they have to play first king g6, and there is no way white can make a progress. It's a draw. This position, however, is winning for white. What white should do, they should go king g4. And now black can take white's bishop. Actually, they have to take. Well, first of all, they are taking a piece. Second, they're getting king closer to queen side. But now white is winning very easily. In fact, black resigned here. King f4, king c6, king e5. And you see, Black's king couldn't make the d6 to stop White's king penetrating on e5. Now, White is easily winning because they simply playing g6, followed by h7. There is no way of stopping White's pawn. And I have to point here that after king takes b6, king f4, even king b5 trying to get b2 pawn, black is way behind. King f6, king takes g6, or even if bishop moves, actually, if bishop moves, it doesn't change anything, as you can easily see. But if... Uh, King b3, king takes g6, king b2, h7, and white even queening with a check. So position is very tricky. Any move with the bishop is a draw, but leaving the bishop, it's more important that white's king can get on queen side quickly, get to f45, f6, then keeping the dark square bishop. And after king takes b6, king f4, black simply resigned. As I already showed, there is absolutely no way of stopping white's uh, passports. Very instructive endgame where one tempo is a lot more important than a bishop. And actually, there are a lot of um, exceptions from uh, 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 the end game from opposite color bishop ending, um, where uh, one side has two extra pawns and it's not winning. Sometimes you see equal 
pawns, equal number of pawns, and that, that side is winning. And in conclusion, I want to show you one very interesting end game I got several years ago. And uh, I remember position I studied like when I was even child and I was able to make a draw. Okay, here is the position from one of my games in the New York International Tournament. And uh, I am black. Why? White cannot play g7 because black is simply going to take and it's going to be a draw. So what should white do? There is no way white can make any progress. Here's the opposite color bishops. It looks like it should be an easy win, but it's not. Now, if we move this position, one square over. You see, white should have a chance to penetrate on a king side through the h file. And here, let me show you the difference between this position and position we're going to set up right now. Now, this position is winning for white. What we did, we simply moved one, uh, whole position one square to the right, one vertical to the right. Now, white is winning. Black can never take the bishop out of a to g8 diagonal, but white is winning because they can simply penetrate from h6 square. That's the opportunity they didn't have in the first position. And now after king g7, there is nothing can be done by black to prevent f7. f7 and f8, it ends the game. Those positions are very important for us to know when we get uh, the opposite color bishop ending. And position, actually, we saw once when white has pawns or h6 and g6. This is one of a kind in opposite color bishops where one side has two connected pass pawns on a sixth rank and it's a draw very instructive endgame. So that will conclude our today's lecture on some important and instructive um, endgames.